it's Ann over at Plant Obsessed. And today we're going to take a look in on blue. Uh, going to have a bit of a worm talk. And here we go. First things first, we're looking in on the harvest end of blue. So we're going to do a bit of sifting, see what we can get out of here, and then start progressing the feeding on the end. All right. So I'm going to here's the little bit of a lid, but this is what I'm going to harvest onto. So if I it's it's actually kind of ideal to have some worms in with your finished castings, especially if you're gonna not use them right away. That way they can keep working through things and keep the whole thing going. This is really dry. Oh crap. Okay. This is really uh, really too dry. I skipped a week with this bin, um, trying to see if I couldn't get more of the castings to get out of here. Uh, it was gone long enough that there was a huge spider web that I had to contend with before I turned on the camera. You didn't need to see my uh, spider ninja skills. Uh, trying to wrap a spider up into a, a cup, trying to relocate him. Or her. I suppose it could have been her. Does anybody else out there rescue spiders? I know some people are like, kill on, you know, on site. But, you know, at least down here where I have a lot of gnat problems and things like that, um, I tend to try and rescue the spiders because they really do help me out. Now, as I have been doing before, I am keeping the, uh, the castings until, I think these will probably be dry enough to sift through the smaller one, but I am still trying to rescue cocoons and whatnot. These are my big avocado pits from the avocados that I bought from Florida. I don't know if I can get any more of those. Those were really awesome. I'm, I'm completely spoiled from buying regular grocery store Haas avocados now. It was really nice. The avocados were kind of stiff enough that you could cut out and put in a salad and they didn't just turn to mush. I thought that was actually really nice. Still sifting really well, so I'm just going to keep going here. furnace has not kicked on in Illinois, but we are swinging between, uh, you know, like 45 degrees at night and like 90 during the day. And I'm just kind of like running this through my fingers to break up any big clumps. And if you think that it would be useful for you to have uh, these uh, screens, they are in my description uh, in my pinned con comment below if you wanted to buy the exact same thing that I have. They've been lasting for about, I mean, five years, and they don't show any sign of giving up on me. I wash them, I scrub them, I use them for bonsai soil, I use them for this. Uh, they're really really, really nice screens. I don't dole out compliments easy, especially not on products, but you know, it's lasted for more than five years with the abuse that I give it. I'm 
So yeah, we're getting quite a bit. Probably about more than 50% right now, I would say. Somebody was asking me about uh, like soda containers and whatever. Here's an example of a piece of uh, cardboard from a soda container. And it does take longer than junk mail or Amazon boxes because it does have that coating on there. Um, but it will break down. And if you don't have time to do this, this is totally fine. Um, it's not necessary. I just prefer it. Everybody's got their own thing, right? If you're fine with having little bits of wood and losing some worms, then you don't need to sift it. You can do something else. Or not at all, just throw it in there as is. So I think this actually might be the end as far as harvesting this end of uh, for this iteration of the bin. Uh, everything is dry enough that I can sift everything through. Okay. Well, that is that is the it. That is it. So let me move you over here gently. And so this is what we got. And I'm going to put that in with the bin that I'm going to sift through the 1 8 screen so that I can recapture the cocoons. All right, I'm going to get this moved out and I'll bring you back. All right, you can see we got that whole end cleared out. So, and I forgot to watch the video again, so we're going to have to, oh geez, we're going to have to go through and see what we can find. So, at this point in time, if you're new to watching this bin, this is the oldest end currently. And this is the leading edge where I have been feeding and also putting new bedding. So let's look at the older end and see how it is doing. Okay, now I've had this lid sitting on there. So it has been retaining the moisture in this end. Uh, it gets to be this time of the year and you never know if the furnace is going to kick on or or what's happening. Um, so I kind of, you know, in that transition period when it gets, uh, you know, down to 40 degrees, you know, I'm always concerned that the, the furnace will turn out and start, turn on and quit, you know, leaving everything nice and moist and dry everything out on me. So this looks like it is doing really well. In fact, we might have to start drying this end and, uh, getting it ready for harvest. I think I fed at both both ends. So it's been probably pushing two weeks. But let's see if we have any food left and if there's any worm ball. Of course, there's a good concentration of worms all throughout, but I don't think we're going to get a worm ball. We've got some um, tomato peels here. Yep, that appears to be all. So we'll go ahead and fluff it. But I think uh, I think it is time to start thinking about letting this dry out and getting the worms to move to the center or to the opposite end. Okay. So I'm just going to do some fluffing. If I find anything big, I'm going to move it to the center. Make sure the moisture is homogeneous all the way through, especially if this is going to start getting uh, harvested soon, uh, banana stem. So, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, some people are, I'm fluffing, but if, you know, you're against fluffing or you think it's not necessary or you don't have time, don't do it. Um, I do it because I want to make sure that the moisture stays even. Um, but like I said, a lot of people don't, and that is fine. Whatever works for you is totally fine. I am just documenting what I do in hopes that it would maybe help somebody in the future. But yeah, this is, 
definitely farther along than I expected it to be. So I'm going to keep kind of edging away here. Let me flip you around. Okay. So then we can kind of investigate where this new proposed harvest zone is going to be. So I'm seeing some paper, but with the way I fluff everything up, who knows if it's, you know, just from one end or the other. Because this still all looks the same to me. When you get as many worms as you have in this bin, which I'm assuming is a minimum of 10 pounds of worms in this 55-gallon uh, system, they can really make quicker progress than you'll see anyplace else. Of course, the worms don't get as big, but they do uh, make fast uh, work of all of your, your food and bedding. So I'm going to start taking it easy on the fluffing here because I think we're getting close. Yep, I found a corn cob. So I'm going to move all the, the big stuff down there and then let's see if we can't get a worm ball. Um, fed, I thought it fed pretty good. There should be something. So this is some kind of grain or seeds or... No, I think it was the melon. I think we had melon last time. Oh, there we go. Little, little bit of a worm ball left. Look how dark blue that blue worm is. Zippy one right there on my thumb. But yeah, it looks like uh, after two weeks, they have gone through most of that big feeding. I mean, we have a higher concentration here in the middle, but nothing that you would, you know, designate as a worm ball. But they are really, really making fast progress here. So I'm going to keep digging, of course. It's kind of my thing. Okay, so now we're getting into the, the new bedding here once we are at the center line. All right, so I'm going to kind of put this intermediate stuff here. I'm going to pick you up again. All right, so here's the difference between the stuff that I'm considering almost finished and what I'm calling intermediate. You can see it's a lighter brown. Um, still has probably more paper pulp or whatever in there. So you can see where this is almost done. And this is slightly less done, and then, of course, down here, it's less, less done. So let's dig into that portion and see what kind of progress they're making. So I'm going to put all my avocados in the almost done part, because I am trying to sprout those Florida ones. But yeah, this is getting a little dry in the middle here. What? Oh, oh, we do have a worm ball. Yay. There we go. I just didn't go far enough. Oh, more, more? But wait, there's more. So there you go. Won't leave without a worm ball. So that's that's a good amount of worms. That's probably over a pound. And a little bit of melon left. And paper. Kind of mix that up. I'm going to grab all the big corn stalks and the sticks and stuff, and we'll put the feeding, the new feeding for today, on that. 
There you go. And that's what an avocado pit does after, you know, three or six months. If it doesn't decide to grow. Oh, more of a worm ball. Okay, so we've got our feeding that we did last time with the reasonably new bedding here. Then I'm going to grab some more bedding and more food and we'll start a new zone, a new new zone down here. So this is kind of what they call the wedge method, but considering that I mess with it so much, most wedge methods are based on you not messing with it. And of course, that's me. I'm going to mess with it. So it is a altered wedge method. So kind of going to start building things up here. And I will grab some bedding. So I'm going to put all these big things down here, and then I have got, my bedding is super wet this time, wetter than I recommend, but this portion here is a little dry, so I think it will split the difference. Alright, so there's our new bedding, and then I think I will probably give them one bag of food, and I'll put it right here at the divider. Um, so more melon, get that kind of moved across, there we go, so bread, melon, avocado, and then I'm just trying to make sure all the big stuff gets tucked under so that it can possibly get done. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to top this up with the stuff that was on top of the screen. It contains all of the drier material as well as quite a few worms as you can see dancing through here. And that should be a good barrier against the um, flies or whatever. And then I am going to go ahead and I'm going to cover this section now instead of the part that I think is nearly finished. I'm going to let that start drying out and hopefully let the worms start moving in this direction. If you have any comments, please put them below. Um, I like hearing your opinions and um, any sort of advice you can give me if you do something similar. Uh, always looking for suggestions. Uh, I don't really um, I've been doing this for a while, but I'm not going to say I'm an expert. This is my journey. This is me and my worms. Um, I give advice, it's true, but I'm not saying that, you know, my way is the, the right way. It is the right way for me. All right, guys, well, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button, and if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, please turn on those notifications. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.